so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i'll be solving problem c that is set construction from finally round one and i will not be making a video for problem d because this round was much harder than a normal div 2 so problem d was much harder than a normal div 2d right so it will not make sense to make a video for problem d so i will only make a video for problem c for this round so let's move on to the solution but before we move on to the solution, I want to tell you guys about Newton School's coding contest. So Newton School organizes this coding contest every month. You guys can solve some quality problems and also compete against top coders in the world. This will be a good opportunity to benchmark yourself where you guys are lying in respect to other students in India or around the world. And not only that, along with this, you can also win some cash prizes. You can win rewards up to rupees 90,000. You can also win scholarships up to rupees 20,000. And along with this, there will also be some job opportunities. So this month, the contest will be on 30th of November. It will be around two and a half hours from 9 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. So do not forget to sign up. Uh, the link will be in the description. So do go and sign up from there. So in the problem, we have been given n sets, right, where n is up to 1,000. So something like a1, a2, a3, so on up to an. All of these sets have to be non-empty, right? So the first condition is all sets are non-empty. Right? And the second condition is all sets are distinct. And Thirdly, we have been given a matrix of size n cross n, a binary matrix of n cross n, right? So something like this. So it has n rows and it has n columns, right? So let's call this matrix B. So if your B i j is equal to zero, then it means that your set A i is not a proper subset of AJ, right? So your set AI is not a proper subset of AJ if your BIJ is equal to zero. And if your BIJ is equal to one, then it means that your AI is a proper subset of AJ, right? So these are the two conditions. If your bi is equal to one, then your ai is a subset, proper subset of aj. And if your bi is equal to zero, then your ai is not a proper subset of aj. Now, what do you mean by a proper subset? For example, let's say your set ai has three elements, one, two, and three. Then your set aj also must have three elements, one, two, and three. But if your ai is a proper subset of aj, then aj must have some extra elements. AJ must have some extra elements. Let's say AJ has an extra five, right? So as you can see, your AI has one, two, and three. Your AJ also has one, two, and three, but it but it also has a extra element five. So you can say that your AI is a proper subset of AJ, right? That is what we mean by a proper subset. So we have been given this binary matrix of n cross n and we have to create n sets ai up to an such that all the sets are non-empty, all the sets are distinct, they obey all the properties of the binary matrix, right? And all the elements in the sets, all elements in sets are integers from one to n, right? So these are the four conditions. Now let's see how we can solve this, right? So now let's move on to the solution and the observations. Observation one, that it can be visualized as a graph. Right, because we have been given a matrix and it is a very well-known thing to see matrices at, as graphs, right, as graphs. So we'll try to build our binary matrix into a graph and then try to use this graph 
to find our answer right so let's see how we can do that so let's take some example from the problem itself let's take the first sample so we have this here your b14 is equal to 1 so that means your a1 is a proper subset of a4 right so we can draw a directed edge from node 4 to node 1 to show the same right so this is your set a4 this is your set a1 and your set a1 is a proper subset of a4 so if you see more terms we have we have b24 we have b24 equal to 1 we have b21 equal to 1 right so there's an edge from 1 to 2 as well similarly there is an edge from 4 to 2 as well so there is an edge here also there is an edge from b34 so there is an edge from 4 to 3 as well so there is an edge here so this is set a3 this is set a2 right so let's say we want to compute or find the set a4 right we want to find the answer for set a4 so how do we find the answer for that as we know a4 is the parent subset right so it must have all the elements from a1 a2 and a3 right so you can say your a4 contains all the elements from a4 union a2 union a3 and plus maybe some extra element maybe some extra elements right so first we need to compute a1 a2 and a3 so first let's go to a1 and try to compute a1 so if we try to compute a1 we can see that your set a1 is the parent subset of a2 right so you can say that your value of a1 is equal to a2 plus some extra elements plus some extra elements so now we need to compute a2 so if we go to a2 right a2 has no more subsets under it a2 has no more subsets under it so we can assign it any random value right so let's say we give a2 is equal to 2 right because the index of this set is equal to 2 so we assigned element 2 to a2 now we know the value of a2 and we can use this value of a2 to compute a1 right so your a1 is equal to set a2 that is just element 2 plus some extra elements now why do we need these extra elements right because if we don't add these extra elements then your set a1 will just be equal to 2 right and if your set a1 is equal to 2 now your set a2 is no more a proper subset of a1 right because for set a2 for set a2 to be a proper subset of a1 a1 should have elements of a2 right and that it has a1 has the elements of a2 that is equal to 2 plus it must have some extra elements it must have some extra elements so for the sake of this we will add a extra one to this right because index of this set is equal to 1 and this set needs some extra elements so we will add a 1 to this right this is the extra element so now your set a1 is just equal to a1 is equal to 1 comma 2 so now you know the value of a1 as well right so now we know the value of a1 is equal to 1 comma 2 this is set a1 this is set a2 right so now to compute a4 we need value of a3 as well right so then we go to a3 and when we see a3 a3 has no more children so we can assign any value to a3 so we will assign its index so we will assign a3 is equal to 3 right so now we know the value of a1 value of a3 and value of a2 so now we can add all these values and get the value for a4 right so your a4 is just equal to 1 comma 2 union 
टू यूनियन थ्री प्लस मे बी सम एक्स्ट्रा एलिमेंट्स राइट सो दिस जस्ट बिकम्स वन टू थ्री एंड मे बी सम एक्स्ट्रा एलिमेंट्स राइट एंड इफ वी लुक एट सेट ए फोर नाउ योर सेट ए फोर इज जस्ट वन टू थ्री प्लस मे बी सम एक्स्ट्रा एलिमेंट्स राइट सो नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू लुक एट दीज एक्स्ट्रा एलिमेंट्स डू वी इवन नीड दैम और आर दे यूजलेस राइट सो लेट मी रीड रॉ दिस एंड वी कैन लुक एट दैट नाउ सो वी हैव फोर वी हैव वन वी हैव टू एंड वी हैव थ्री राइट योर सेट ए वन इज इक्वल टू वन टू योर सेट ए टू इज इक्वल टू टू योर सेट ए थ्री इज इक्वल टू थ्री एंड योर सेट ए फोर इज इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री प्लस मे बी सम extra elements so let's see is your a1 a proper subset of a4 right your set a1 is equal to 1 2 your set a4 is equal to 1 2 and 3 right so if we don't consider the extra elements for now let's say your set a4 is just equal to 1 2 and 3 is your set a1 a proper subset of a4 The answer is yes, right? Because your a one is equal to one two, and your set a four is equal to one two three, right? So this three is the extra element that you need. Similarly, if we check for a two and a four, your set a two has two, and your set a four has one two and three, right? So one and three are the extra elements. So so you can say your a two is a proper subset of a four. Similarly, if we look at a three and a four, right? Your a three only has three, and your a four has one, two, and three. Right. So this one and two are the extra elements. So you can say that a one, a two, a three, all are the proper subsets of a four. So you can make a argument that we don't need these extra elements. Right. So in this case, we don't need these extra elements. We don't need them. but i would say that it is better to add a extra element in every case right i would say just add a 4 here right because index of this set is 4 so i'm saying just add a 4 here because if you add a 4 it won't hurt you in the future and if you don't add a 4 you have to take care of some corner cases how can i explain this so let me take an example where like you have to add the extra 4 uh, right so let me take an example again So let's say we have a four, we have a one, we have a two, and let's say we have a three again, three here, and let's say we also have a five somewhere. Let's say we have a five here. So five comes from one, two, and three. So your a one is just one two, your a two. Is let's say two. Let's draw one more node here, right? Your a three is equal to three, right? So now you first have to compute a five, right? Before you compute a four, you have to compute a five now. And when you compute a five, it will come from a one, a two, and a three. So your set a five will be equal to one, two, and three, right? So now if you compute a four, your a four will be equal to a one union a two. Union A three, Union A five, right? This will be equal to one, two, three, plus some extra elements maybe, right? But if you look at A five and A four here, your A five is also equal to one, two, and three. And if you don't add the extra elements, your A four is also equal to one, two, and three, right? So in this case, your A five is not a proper subset of A four. so you need to add some extra elements to a4 so there will be cases so in this case your a4 needed extra elements and there will be cases case 2 like in this case where it where a4 did not need extra elements right 
so if you don't want to do the case work it is just better if you add extra elements in every case right so whenever you are computing the parent element just add all the elements and add some extra element right for example when i am computing a4 i am computing a1 a5 a3 a2 so i will say a1 union a2 union a3 union a5 and plus a union of 4 right because index of this set is equal to 4 so i will add a extra 4 just for safety right i might not need this 4 but i will still add it right for safety because it might happen there will be some set which will not be a proper subset of mine so i will just add this 4 for safety right because when i add this 4 now i will be sure that all the child subsets are proper subsets of me so in this case also i will still add this 4 for a safety right so now you know how to solve this so i will just provide a brief summary or a pseudocode how you guys can implement this right so summary will be something like this for every node let's call this i for every node i from 1 to n just do a dfs on i right just do a dfs and in dfs right you will compute your answer of i as dfs of i you can say for every child of i you can say your answer of i is equal to answer of union answer of i union answer of child right so you find answer for every child answer of every child and just a union it with answer of i so, so your answer of i is equal to answer of i union answer of every child in i and in the end you also have to do answer of i is equal to answer of i union i right this i is for safety like i told there might be some cases where your children are not your proper subsets so you have to add this i for safety to ensure that all your children are proper subsets of you and in the end you can just print out the answer and that is the entire solution so if i have to like show you guys the implementation here is the code so i have my matrix this is v this is the matrix binary matrix then i have the graph right then i have my vector of sets this will store the answer for all n sets then i have a visited array this will help me to implement dfs then I will take the input of the binary matrix and if my V of i is equal to 1, I will add an edge from j to i. Then for every node from 0 to n, I will run a DFS on it, right? So if we go to my DFS function, here's a DFS function. If I already know the answer for this node, if I already know the answer or the set for this node, I can just return. Otherwise, I will uh, do a DFS of every child of this node. So for every child in this node, do a DFS for that child and for every element in the answer of that child right? because when i compute the answer for the child i will add all the elements from this child to my parent subset right so for every x belonging to answer of child answer of node dot insert x right so this is the falling step this is the falling step right answer of i is equal to answer of i union answer of child then in the end i can just do answer of node dot insert node plus one this is for safety right this is the falling step and then i can set visited of node is equal to one that i have computed the answer for this node and i don't need to compute it again and again and then i can just return so that is the entire solution and if you have some doubts feel free to join my discord server i'll be more than happy to answer your doubts there and i will see you guys in the next one bye bye